Welcome back to another essential movie. Today we will be taking a look at a story called Super Hybrid. That's not like any engine I've ever heard. The opening scene shows a general view of Chicago Street under bright illumination. Soon, the camera settles on a moving car. It is a Chevrolet Nova in matte black. The car approaches the nightclub and begins examining the inside with its special night vision and through the wall powers. It waited for two young men in their early 20s, on whom it had fixed its concentration. The two men soon started chit-chatting on their way out of the nightclub. The automobile didn't initially grab the attention of the two men since it was matte black and had an outdated form, perhaps from the 1970s. They turned back seconds later just to note a Red Games vehicle. One of the guys was drawn to it, and the other was persuaded to board it. The subsequent man was hesitant to enter since he thought it was kind of a setup. They noticed the vehicle was unusual as soon as they got inside because the door started to close on its own and the ignition had vanished. The doubtful man began blaming the other. They made many unsuccessful attempts to escape, and their screams were soon cut off. Once more, the vehicle returns to its original model. I mean, who doesn't love classic cars? I could have also fallen for the trap since I wouldn't expect such a beautiful car to be a man-eater. The killer car continues on its voyage to the main street at the same pace it did at the beginning of the movie. It appeared to be pursuing someone or something. It never bothers to look at the traffic signals or lanes and overtakes on the wrong side of the road. It was involved in a collision in a split second. Within a few seconds of the crash, the sound of police car sirens can be heard. They called for an ambulance as soon as they saw a lifeless body lying on the ground. At the point when they look inside the bizarre destroyed vehicle, the police tracked down no victims in the dark vehicle. According to their analysis, no one would have survived the vehicle accident. They were amazed. The unidentified vehicle was hauled to a nearby police garage. Loud hip-hop music is blaring. A crowded room is zoomed in on. David is yelled at by Tilda, who asks him if he has seen her locket. David put Tilda on hold while he is busy lifting weights. Tilda seems to feel neglected, so she turns off the music. At this point, David stops squatting with the dumbbells and thinks back to Tilda's request. Before Tilda went because she was in a rush, David told her that she should bring groceries. She then starts her cruiser, dons her helmet, and speeds away. A dispatch radio is chatting away in the garage. The in-charge mechanic, Ray, instructs Maria to tidy the piles because the insurance would not replace any documents destroyed during construction. When Ray turns off the radio that Maria was clutching, Maria becomes enraged. Ray warned her to be cautious in her intentions. To convey her rage, the young girl squeezes a toy. Hector turns on the lights and starts his regular car inspection. He heard a splashing sound that caught his attention. He approached the car, touched it, and made a note of it. He then moved toward the office place. Prior to going excessively far, the vehicle supernaturally sorts itself out and kills one of the crew members, Hector, by slamming him into an elevator way. On the radio, awesome music is playing. Ray, the garage manager, can't track down Hector, and he tells his team, Gordy, an accomplished mechanic with a portable hearing assistant, Al, another specialist, and Bobby, an understudy whose auntie Tilda landed in the position, to go get Hector so they can get vehicles off the third level. Tilda shows up and is told off by Ray for Bobby studying while at work. In the parking lot, Al began searching for Hector. He never stops calling out his name. He soon became alarmed as Bobby suddenly stepped out of the automobile. Both people who touched the monstrous vehicle noticed that it had a strange texture. Ray noticed Tilda on the phone and told her to go to level 3 right away. Down at level 3, Tilda runs into Gordy, who informs her about the existence of a vehicle of which he is unaware. Gordy described his previous experiences with autos as they both moved toward the location of the car. When they see Bobby, Tilda's nephew, he is equally unable to identify the make of the vehicle in front of him. They think the vehicle is weird after touching, as though it isn't made of metal, and that the motor, which is totally quiet, makes murmuring commotions when they pay attention to it. The car's model proved challenging to pin down. When Tilda realized Al was working with them, she inquired about Hector. Al makes an excuse and leaves to find him. Even though the automobile had been dropped off in the morning, it was still warm. They all agree to tow the car to level 2, but not before they search for Hector and Al. Tilda tells Bobby and Gordy she will meet them upstairs and releases them. The monstrous vehicle had been watching them and listening in on their chats the entire time. In his search for Hector, L discovered a fluid-like material while he was wandering around. 
He uses his fingers to feel and smell the contents. The door automatically opens when the driver looks at a passing car. He carefully approaches the automobile. Tilda's voice stating his name astonished him as he peered through the open door. Tilda assumed Al had relocated the automobile, but to her amazement, Al denied having done so. Out of nowhere, the vehicle shows some signs of life, folding a limb-like appendage over Al and sucking him into the vehicle. Tilda can't free him and is struck by the vehicle as it gets away. Everyone came out when Tilda chose to honk at a nearby car. Ray made a joke about Tilda asking co-workers to raise their hands if they believed Hector and Al were killed by a man-eating automobile after they had been told what happened. Tilda made an effort to convince Ray of what she had seen, but Ray was unconvinced. Bobby concurred with her aunt's statement that the automobile was odd. Ray was not persuaded by this either. Honestly, I would have agreed with Ray. How can a car eat people? Tilda must be teasing us. He made the decision to search for the car and the two lost people. While they were still shouting, a distant automobile engine noise could be heard. Ray confidently began to approach the vehicle, but Tilda continued to caution him to stay away from it. They need to pop the engine, so Gordy is told to get a crowbar from the tool box. Ray starts listening to Tilda. He leans his ears against the car's hood and listens for strange noises and movements. Ray orders the hood opened and a monster snake's head erupts from it, almost killing the four of them. Tilda yells as they rush in all directions. Ray eventually believes what Tilda is saying. They all offer different explanations of the circumstances and quickly discern that the car has vanished. Monster snakes in the engine? Now this is serious. Tilda calls Maria on the wall-mounted radio system. She requested that she dial the precinct. Despite being informed that the issue was urgent, Maria began to jest when she made her plea. They devised a strategy to destroy the car. Bobby began to rejoice because he believed the car was stuck. It quickly departed after that. Maria left the workplace to investigate what was happening when she started to feel lonely. She called Ray, but he didn't answer. She sees a vehicle with its headlights on as she descends the ramp and yells, over here, up here. She didn't understand it was a deadly vehicle, and before long, she was running for her life. Tilda, on the other hand, knows that the murderous vehicle targeted Maria. Everyone rushes to assist her. Maria ran to the office and shut the door. This did not stop the outraged car from crashing through it. Maria was instructed to leave the office by Tilda, who then seized her motorcycle. Maria leaped onto Tilda's moving bike and lay flat. The strange automobile was closely following them. It looks like it is pay time for Maria's ignorance. Had she had listened to Tilda, she would not have been on the run. Gordy made the decision to divert it after realizing that it would not quit pursuing them. The strange noises the car made instead distracted him. When he regained consciousness, he began to flee for his life. Tragically, he is run under by a vehicle that strikes an electrical box, killing him and putting the garage on power crisis. His co-workers were startled. Strange noises were coming from the car as well. After the light settled, Gordy's body was discovered on the ground. Tilda's chain was next to him. Gordy plays a hero without skills and met his death. With the limited lighting, the team looks for Ray's keys to the exit yet can't find it. All emergency exits and passageways outside are welded closed to forestall drug fiends from breaking in and looting their hardware. They conclude they've destroyed sufficient annihilation and should outmaneuver the executioner vehicle. They work to set up a Burmese tiger trap involving welded spikes in the deep opening and a huge canvas to fool the vehicle into it. In the meantime, the vehicle gradually begins advancing down toward them, setting off the cautions to alarm the others in its area. The team made Molotov cocktail to use against the vehicle. Tilda goes about as the lure to bring it into the snare, yet is pursued somewhere near the vehicle. Tilda is saved by Bobby subsequent to being tossed from her bike. Maria tosses Molotov cocktail at the vehicle which bounces off and burns her unintentionally, and she tumbles to her demise in the pit. Put off by their misfortune, the trios choose to proceed the arrangement. Bobby gets into the police SUV they'd been utilizing and they find it is a snare. In that confusion, the shapeshifter car outsmarts them again, and this time camouflage into police car and consume Bobby. I think I am going to have night terror after this movie. I am already shivering. The only survivors were Tilda and Ray. Ray receives a complaint from Tilda, since he was the one who told Bobby to board the car quickly. They eventually decide to work together to entice the beast into the trap. They followed the liquid that oozed from the monstrous car that looked like blood. Ray and Tilda pursue the vehicle and are almost outfoxed when it's double backs on them. Tilda and Ray figure out how to inspire it to fall into the pit. 
I am at melting point now and shocked to see the real monster behind the car. It has a bear-like shape and with tentacles until the shots a vehicle from above on top of it, smashing it. Ray finally uncovers that he had the keys to the exit the whole time and opens the garage for Tilda to leave. Her boyfriend David comes in and looks at his obliterated vehicle, and she strolls off while Ray dials a news station to update them concerning what occurred. Tilda sees five additional vehicles like the one they'd killed go toward the garage, however appears to be excessively desensitized to mind, upset over her misfortune. Ray suddenly realizes he is encircled by the vehicles that all turn their headlights on him. This denotes the finish of the film and his destiny stays obscure. I really enjoyed this thriller movie. The stream and unfurling of occasions and activities completely portrays its title, Super Hybrid. The way that all occasions occur in a solitary night is enrapturing. Are the five vehicles seen going to raise direction the partners of the killer vehicle? Will the vehicles pay vengeance their killed partner? I would recommend this movie for any thriller lovers, and it will not disappoint you. Thanks for watching another Essential Recap. Please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe.